They have produced some of the most dangerous chemicals known to us, PCBs and Agent Orange. But for years, the companies insisted these chemicals were safe, even though they knew at the time this was not true. During the Vietnam War, both Dow and Monsanto supplied the U.S. Armed Forces with the deadly chemical Agent Orange. The Vietnamese were told the chemical would not harm human life, wildlife, or domestic animals. The chemical companies knew this was not true, but said nothing. They sprayed in the morning, and in the afternoon the leaves of the trees fell to the ground. We were on patrol, and we were all covered in liquid. Dead fish floated to the surface on rivers. We had to eat, so we ate the dead fish, but we didn't know what this was. Thirty-five years later, this chemical continues to wreak havoc. Today, the psychological impact on parents of child victims of dioxin is very significant. The U.S. government is beginning to take stock of this tragedy, but the manufacturers of Agent Orange still refuse to take responsibility. Monsanto no longer produces PCBs, since these are now banned. But the company's deadly impact on our lives continues, spreading illness and poverty amongst us. It is doing this silently this time, through the genetic engineering of the food we eat. The major companies that have invested in genetic engineering have transformed themselves from chemical companies to seed companies. So Monsanto, for example, is a huge chemical company and transformed itself into now the largest seed company in the world. Through genetic engineering, Monsanto now tinkers away at our food at a molecular level so that some of the food we eat no longer resembles anything our bodies have ever known. Monsanto's genetically engineered corn, for example, produces a built-in pesticide, known as Bt toxin, inside each and every kernel. This way, when bugs attempt to eat the corn, they're killed. The problem, of course, is that when we eat this corn, we eat the built-in pesticide as well. Monsanto and others claim that this Bt toxin is quickly destroyed in human stomachs, but studies indicate that this may not be the case. The toxin even ends up in newborn's blood. Rats fed a lifetime of genetically engineered corn grew significant tumors, with 70% of females and 50% of males dying prematurely. This kernel is then eaten by humans without warning by either Monsanto or Health Canada about its possible dangers. Scientists who tried to warn the public about possible dangers have been gagged, threatened, or fired. Dr. Shiv Chopra was a senior scientist with Health Canada responsible for food safety. But when he refused to approve a genetically engineered drug intended for use in food production, he had a fight on his hands. I was given a series of products to look at coming from the companies. Big companies like Monsanto, Eli Lilly, Pfizer, Bayer, these huge companies. And I say, this information is not satisfactory. Go back, produce more. And the companies go back to the minister or the prime minister or the privy council. They say, pass it anywhere because the U.S. has passed it. I can't. And so therefore they say, you're fired. These politicians have made deals with the companies with vested interest. And so the politicians forget the public. Monsanto said genetically modified foods would reduce the need for pesticides. But the opposite has been true. Instead, weeds have become tolerant to Monsanto's chief insecticide, Roundup. As a result, the company has decided to return to the older, even riskier chemical, 2,4-D. 2,4-D was half of Agent Orange. It's been contaminated with dioxins and it's known by some to have um, effects on reproduction, uh, neurological development and um, it is linked to cancer, particularly non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, which some journalists have actually dubbed the farmer's cancer. Ann Slater, a small organic dairy farmer outside Stratford, Ontario, has concerns about the stronger pesticides. 2,4-D is an older generation herbicide and, and farmers did become concerned that it, was, that it was somewhat dangerous and so they moved away from it and now they're going to be moving back to it. The Canadian government, in the meantime, continues to support these changes. 
pretty clear to see who the government's working for, and it's not for farmers. The research money for, for agriculture has been being pulled. The support for public breeders has been being pulled. And, and the government talks about this as innovation. We'll, uh, we need to support innovation, and their, their perspective is that innovation happens by companies that develop something to sell to farmers. The system that's been built up around pesticides is a system that also supports the use of genetically engineered seed, which is a system that is controlled essentially by corporations and leaves very little room for farmers' voices or for farmers to actually even earn money. These new seeds are patented, which means that farmers have to buy more new seed every year. Farmers can't save seeds because if the companies find their genes in the farmer's field, the companies will prosecute. The whole system has become corrupt. The high offices of the governments, the US FDA, Health Canada, the presidents, the prime ministers, the privy councils, the ministers, everybody is on that same side to make profit for the companies. It is the companies who are sponsoring these people to get elected, and then they demand such and such persons uh, uh, should be appointed and such and such products should be uh, approved. If you care about where your food comes from, if you care about having farmers that, uh, that, uh, that go out every day and milk their cows or, uh, or plant their crops, if you care about where your food comes from, then, then you need to care about who controls our seeds. It's my constitutional right that you don't wreck my food. You don't inject things into my body. You don't force these things on me.